Hey there. Today I'll be showing you some tips on completing the Monarch's Journey challenges for Duke Pavo... Duke Pavau... Duke Paul Subic of Croatia. As usual, I'm only using the DLCs that have been made available for free by Paradox, those being Sword of Islam and the Old Gods, and don't be alarmed by my cosmetic mods, they don't interfere with unlocking the challenges. Here are the three challenges we have available today. The first is Conqueror from Brebir. Hold the Kingdom of Serbia and the Duchies of Bosnia, Croatia, and Hum, and completely control the de jure provinces of all four. This is an all-or-nothing challenge. You only get the points if you hold them all at the same time, and can be completed as long as you're playing as the Subic Dynasty. One aspect the challenge isn't very clear on is that you don't need to directly hold these titles. You can give them away to vassals, and as long as you're ultimately still the one who owns the land, they will still count. Second is established. Make sure the dynasty has a strong grasp on the land by having many of your dynasty members be landed nobles at the same time. Four for bronze, six for silver, and eight for gold. This is the only challenge of the three that needs to be completed in Duke Paul's lifetime. Third and finally is Substantial Legacy, which requires building great works. One for bronze, two for silver, and three for gold. It can also be completed as long as you're playing the Subics. Duke Paul has a pretty rough time at the start of this challenge. He's a double duke and the strongest vassal in Hungary, but he's the only Croatian ruler in a land full of Hungarians, so his liege and his fellow vassals all have opinion penalties against him. His rightful lands are split apart by Venice, which has triple his troops, his stats are hot garbage, and Croatia is somehow a tributary state of both Serbia and, bizarrely, his own liege, Hungary, which I feel like isn't a thing that should happen. What that equates to is losing access to roughly 40% of his yearly income and 30% of his troops. He is surrounded by neighbors that are way too powerful for him to fight, and because he's a Catholic surrounded by other Christians, getting a CB for the land he needs is difficult. Obviously, the top priority is completing the challenge that needs to be done in Paul's lifetime, established. This requires you to have eight dynasty members controlling some form of landed title simultaneously. At the beginning of the challenge, there are already two on the counter, the Count of Split and the Count of Zadar, who is actually a vassal of Venice. What this means is that the landed dynasty members don't need to be your vassals or even within your realm. They just need to hold some land somewhere in the world. And the character you're currently playing as apparently doesn't count toward this, which is fair enough. However, even if you revoke and hand out as many titles as you can, it's not really viable to give away six titles using just the lands that Paul starts with. Plus, we need to hold as many of those as possible ourselves so we can be strong enough to fight the Bosnians, Venetians, and Serbs for one of the other challenges. So we need more land and we need it fast. Paul starts with two sons and Gavilkind succession, which means the two duchies you hold at the start are going to be split apart under ownership of his children, and that is obviously not conducive to our long-term goals. So the easiest way to handle this, as well as having enough power to complete established, is to become a king. Step 1. Make alliances. As all medieval economists know, the only valuable export in Croatia is virgins, and there are 10 eligible subics within your court at the start of the game. There's actually 11, but one's an old man that can't get any good marriages. Marry off your dynasty members to get alliances with powerful neighbors like Bohemia, the Holy Roman Empire, Bulgaria, Sicily, and Epirus. Two things to keep in mind. First, Duke Paul probably shouldn't have any more kids and divide his titles even more, so try to find him a wife that's at or approaching age 45. Second, only one of the ten people you can marry off at the start is a woman, so be very careful about who you marry her to, and save her for a really good alliance. The King of Sicily is a good candidate for this one. Check to see if they'd agree to an alliance, but don't actually form any yet. You don't want to be obliged to join in their wars. At this point, the alliances are more for insurance in case you get attacked by someone else. Step 2. Wait for a crusade. The Pope will call crusades early and often, likely within the first year. While it might be tempting to start kicking the Italians out of Croatia right away with help from your new in-laws, you don't want to be put in a situation where the crusade starts in the middle of your own war, forcing you to split your attention between two potentially lucrative war fronts, potentially losing your own war if you go to the crusades, and potentially getting excommunicated if you don't. Not that that would ever happen to me, I'm good at this game. Long story short, the Venetians aren't going anywhere, and after the crusade finishes, you'll have plenty of time to wage domestic wars. Crusades are particularly important in this challenge because they provide the most straightforward opportunity to break free of Hungary and become a king. From day one of the challenge, focus all efforts into beefing up your levy count as much as possible, and when the crusade is about 60 days away, start sending them over. You don't want to be the first boots on the ground, ideally you'll wait safely offshore in the boats until a suitably large Christian army comes along. Link up with them for safety, and watch the surrounding situation carefully. To get the top contribution in the crusade while having a small army is difficult, but not impossible. Basically, the best way to get contribution points is to participate in large and long battles. So while you want to spend most of your time linked with big ally armies to protect yourself, if you see a huge battle going on between reds and blues, unlink and throw your soldiers into the fray. 
It doesn't even matter if your side wins or if your own troops were barely a fraction of the Christian army. The length and size of the fight are all that matter. Occupying enemy territory gives you a drip feed of contribution, but the time it takes to siege provinces down sort of makes it not worth it, especially with the small amount of numbers you're likely to be controlling. Keep your eye on the contribution counter, and if the crusade is about to be won with you as the top contributor, quickly change your beneficiary policy so that you keep the titles rather than giving them to a family member. Now that you're a king, your realm will remain together after succession, and you should have more than enough titles underneath you to hand out to your many dynasty members to get to eight for the established challenge. And if there aren't enough, it shouldn't be too hard for you to revoke one or two from some of your new vassals. The other prizes of the crusade are the kingdom title and the independence it gives from Hungary, as well as a huge amount of wealth. That wealth can go directly into the next challenge, substantial legacy, for building great works. The construction of even the first stage of these things takes a ton of money and anywhere from 7 to 25 years, but the challenge only measures if you've started construction, not if you've finished it. To complete the challenge with the least impact on your wallet, start the construction of a ruler statue, a great university, and a great lighthouse on a coastal county. Immediately pause construction on all three and leave them like that for the rest of the game unless you really want them. If you see that getting top contribution in the crusade isn't possible, and it probably won't be on your first one, set your beneficiary as one of your family members and be content with the fact that you at least got one addition to established by getting them a title. As for the rest, you'll have certainly gained a respectable amount of wealth and piety from your participation. You can invest this back into requesting an invasion CB from the Pope, who should at least have one viable candidate available. Take a look and see which candidate is the weakest, and take the invasion of that one. Before you start the war, look at the lands you have non-aggression pacts with. Which ones are closest to the kingdom you chose to invade? Which ones have the most troops? And which ones aren't currently in wars of their own? All of these factors will decide which ones you should upgrade to alliances, as your allies' helpfulness will likely make or break this war. With the Monks and Mystics DLC, you can give direct orders to your war allies to join up with your troops or target specific counties or enemy armies. Without Monks and Mystics, allies are prone to such enjoyable actions as waiting six months for every last one of their troops to clump together before trying to join up with you, getting distracted by their own wars and rebellions, taking stupid roundabout routes when they could have just used boats, and doing literally nothing at all. But if the AI decides that it wants to be helpful, you should be able to steamroll your invasion target. In invasion wars, on top of taking the overall kingdom, you also directly take any lands that your side was occupying when the war ended. This means that if you're already at 100% war score but have the steam to keep going, you can and should siege down one holding in as many counties as possible so that you directly take all of it once you enforce demands. You don't need to siege down every holding in every province, just taking the capital will do to get those nice dotted lines. Once you win, you'll be the proud owner of a new kingdom title, independence from Hungary, and a bunch of land to give to your family members for the established challenge. The only thing you're missing is the crusade bucks to build great works, but money is a renewable resource and there'll be more crusades in the future. Whether you have a kingdom from a crusade, or have invaded your fellow Catholics for one, you have some difficult choices to make. Venice, Bosnia, and Serbia are the three lands standing in the way of the conqueror from Bribir challenge. All are probably more powerful than you. Making matters worse, you now have an overseas kingdom that will soon be plagued by its own uprisings, vassal disputes, and factions that want you out of power. Every time there's a war on the home front, it takes longer to consolidate your forces because some of them need to sail potentially vast oceans to join the fight. That's why I actually recommend giving away your lands and granting independence to most of the vassals in your overseas kingdom, and instead consolidating mostly or entirely in your homelands. The tricky part is that if you abandon too much of the kingdom, and then one of the independent rulers is able to gain control of more than half of the de jure kingdom, they can usurp it from you, causing you to fall back down to duke tier and you need to be a king in order to keep your realm together and to use duchy claimants to your advantage. So try to find a balance that minimizes how much attention you need to pay to your colonies while preventing yourself from losing your crown entirely. If you hold on to at least one county and convert to another form of Christianity like Orthodox or Miaphysite, you actually don't need to worry about being usurped because titles cannot be usurped from someone of another religion who still holds de jure land within it. The other exception, but one that you can't really control, are Crusader Kingdoms that are sometimes created when the actual kingdom title can't be given to the Crusade winner for one reason or another. Because these kingdoms have no de jure land, they can't be usurped even if you grant independence to all your overseas vassals. I gained the Kingdom of Crusader Maghreb in one crusade, and essentially was able to just convert it to a custom kingdom in Croatia by granting independence to all the African vassals. Anyway, completely controlling Serbia, Bosnia, Hum, and Croatia will probably take the bulk of time in your playthrough. You start in complete control of Hum, but you need to take all of Serbia, all of Bosnia, which starts as a tributary of Hungary who will do their best to protect it, and parts of Croatia are being controlled by Venice, who are very strong and very, very wealthy. Your allies will probably be necessary for fighting your many enemies, especially Venice, so once again wait until they aren't distracted by their own wars to form 
from the Alliance and call them in to help. In my own game, I had a lot of success allying with the Merchant Republic of Pisa. I can't predict how the politics and military situation of your game will exactly play out by the time you're ready to start these conquests, but I can give some general advice for getting the titles you need. Hum. Easy enough, you already completely control it at the start. Just don't lose it. Croatia. You hold the duchy title at the start, but Venice controls the county of Zadar and the city of Veglia within the county of Veglia, which you control. You don't need to do any work to get a CB for these regions, you can just start two separate de jure wars for Zadar and for Veglia Holdings. The hard part is actually winning these wars, as Venice is quite powerful on its own and has a strong enough economy to be able to hire thousands of mercenaries on top of that. Either hope your strong allies can join up with you in time, or save up a fortune to buy even more mercenaries than they do. Bosnia. This one depends pretty heavily on random events that occur during inheritance. Serbia also tends to try and conquer it right at the beginning of the challenge. If you're lucky, there will be a landless strong claimant available that's willing to join your court. Give him a piece of land and press his claim. If you're unlucky and there aren't any, hire a chancellor with 20 or more diplomacy and get him fabricating a claim. Also, if you can get the Kingdom of Croatia under your control, Bosnia is a part of that kingdom, so you can de jure claim it piece by piece. Serbia. This is the big one. It starts as an almost completely united kingdom, so you can't get a claimant to the throne and take it all in one swoop. There are also very few duchy claimants when you start the challenge, and none of them are likely to accept an invitation to your court because of the religious and cultural differences between the Orthodox Serbians and your Catholic Croatians. If you have an Orthodox county in your domain, you could try converting to see if that helps, but in my games, the two Orthodox counties in Paul's control at the start of the game converted to Catholicism really quickly for some reason. Your best option might just be to get a good chancellor to fabricate on Serbian duchy in the background while you fight your other battles. Once you completely kick the king of Serbia out of the de jure Serbian lands, you can usurp the kingdom and use de jure wars to get rid of Venice and anyone else who still holds land within it. While your peace treaties are cooling down with one opponent, focus your attention on building your armies back up and targeting the next one. Assassinating rulers can speed up the process, but also damage your reputation and put your head in an angry family member's crosshairs if you get caught. Participate in crusades whenever they pop up for cash, hire liberal amounts of mercenaries to supplement your armies, get those great works started if you haven't done that challenge already, change your succession to something that isn't gavel kind so you can keep your titles consolidated, and if you're down to the last one or two holdings you need, remember that truce breaking, while highly damaging to your reputation, doesn't matter in the long run because your reign only needs to last until the moment you hold Serbia, Croatia, Hum, and Bosnia under your control at the same time. And with that, this challenging monarch's journey is finally complete. Leave a like if this guide helped, comment any differing strategies you found, and subscribe for more. Since the monarch's journey has started, I've completed all the challenges at Gold rank, and completing Duke Paul's campaign was what allowed me to get the final reward unlocked. This leads me to believe that this might be the final challenge released for the game. If that turns out to be true, and we don't get a new set of challenges in two weeks, I'm gonna go back and start making guides for the earlier challenges. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.